Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video. My name is Thijs, I'm the technical evangelist at Varnish Software, and today we're gonna to talk about a subject that may seem niche to some, but that is very relevant to WordPress users who use Varnish with terminated TLS. A lot of them get stuck serving mixed content or end up in an infinite redirect loop because of lack of TLS awareness. And today I'm gonna to explain how to avoid that and how to fix that. So if you're a WordPress user using Varnish, this may be for you. First things first, WordPress is an open source project written in PHP, originally built as blogging software. But over time, it evolved into a full-blown website builder and a framework for website building and development. While the opinions vary on the quality of the code base, one has to admit that WordPress is undeniable and has a gigantic install base. A lot of bigger projects are using WordPress as well, which requires using a cache like Varnish to ensure that it remains fast, scalable, and resilient. Unfortunately, the open source version of Varnish doesn't support TLS natively. So people turn to external TLS proxies to handle the job. And while we develop an open source TLS proxy called Hitch, other technologies, other proxies and load balancers are at play as well. If you're using WordPress in conjunction with Varnish and a TLS proxy, you may have run into this problem and this problem. The first problem is a mixed content problem, where the browser complains about receiving both HTTPS and HTTP requests for that same website. So despite the website being built and called over HTTPS, the remaining resources are loaded over plain HTTP because WordPress has no awareness that the initial connection using the TLS proxy was made over HTTPS. To WordPress and Varnish, everything is plain HTTP. This mixed content problem is clearly because of lack of TLS awareness in WordPress, but that lack of TLS awareness overall can also bleed into Varnish and result into getting stuck in infinite redirect loops when enforcing HTTP to HTTPS redirections. This redirection problem occurs when the first request for a page is done over plain HTTP. It is not yet cached and Varnish will fetch it from WordPress. WordPress will only see plain HTTP and will perform the redirection enforcing HTTPS that 301 with the location header will end up being cached, ensuring that the next request, regardless of the protocol, will also enforce that redirect. So despite calling the website over HTTPS, you'll still get that redirect and eventually you'll get stuck in that redirect loop, which is also a very big problem. So let's talk about how to fix these problems step by step. Let's focus on the mixed content first. If there's an overall lack of TLS awareness, we can tackle this by creating the awareness ourselves. And we can do that using a conventional HTTP header called XForwarded Proto. This request header either has HTTP or HTTPS as its value. And its role is to transport the URL scheme of the original client request end to end so that it eventually lands with WordPress who can interpret it and determine whether to render plain HTTP URLs in the output or HTTPS URLs. Typically, it's a TLS proxy setting the value to HTTPS because that's the one doing the offloading. When Varnish receives the request, the value would be set to HTTP. However, Varnish has a bigger role. This VCL code checks whether the XForded proto header was set. When it's not set, Varnish will try to set it itself by doing some checks and making some assumptions. If we look at the code, the first thing we check is the server port. If we receive a request on port 8443, we assume that this is TLS traffic because it's a reserve port we use to connect the TLS proxy to. So we, as a result, can set XForded Proto to HTTPS. Alternatively, we can use the proxy varnish module for that. And while the proxy protocol is beyond the scope of this video, we can summarize it by saying that it's a protocol that transports the original client information as part of a TCP preamble, containing some, as we call it, TLV attributes that have TLS awareness. So that proxy is SSL function knows whether the initial connection, if it was done over the proxy protocol, was HTTP or HTTPS. And so we set the XForded proto header accordingly. If none of these assertions are true, it's just plain HTTP and we set XForded proto to HTTP. The XForded proto header is nothing but a means to an end. The real goal, the end goal, is setting the HTTPS super global to on in your PHP code, because that's what WordPress uses to do protocol detection. And we can do this by simply adding the following statements to your wp-config.php file. And that's pretty much all it takes to create that protocol awareness in WordPress. 
And if you're installing the official Docker images of WordPress, that code is already present, it's already there. So mixed content is not a factor when you're running it in Docker. But when you don't wanna to touch the config, you can do it in your web server as well. So if you're using the Apache web server, it's just a matter of setting the following configuration directives in your htaccess file. This Apache configuration in your htaccess file conditionally sets an environment variable. It sets HTTPS to on if the export proto header contains the value HTTPS. And by setting that environment variable, the super global HTTPS will automatically be enabled in PHP. If you're using Nginx instead of Apache as your web server, you can alter a fast CGI parameter in your vhost conf. You define the HTTPS fast CGI parameter and set its value to on if the X forwarded proto header is on. We do this using a forwarded underscore HTTPS custom variable. The name doesn't really matter, we just called it that way. You can call it whatever you want. But we set its default value to off, then we check the value of X forwarded proto, and if it's HTTPS, we enable it, and in the end, your PHP super global called HTTPS will be on as well. Now that we've implemented TLS awareness in WordPress, either in the configuration directly or through Apache and Nginx configurations, the problem is solved. And when we call the website over HTTPS, all the remaining resources will also be loaded over HTTPS instead of HTTP. So there's no more mixed content. We've solved that problem. Let's focus on the other problem, infinite HTTPS redirect loops. If you're enforcing HTTP to HTTPS redirections in WordPress, potentially through a plugin, Varnish has no awareness of the protocol. As you can see in this VCL code that describes the built-in VCL for creating the lookup hash, we use the request URL and the host header. You don't see any reference to a scheme or a protocol. So what we need to do to introduce the protocol is create a cache variation. And luckily there's another conventional HTTP header for it. It's called the vary header. And the vary header tells the cache to create variations of an object based on the value of a request header. And that request header will be the X forwarded proto header. So for every URL and every host header, there'll be an HTTP and an HTTPS version. And that's the way you solve that second problem. And you can set that in a variety of ways. Here's how to do that in Apache. You simply add the following line to your htaccess file, which will result in the very header being set. If it already exists, the X forwarded proto value will be appended to any existing values. And that response header will eventually be received by Varnish. Varnish will respect that and will use it to create cache variations. If you're using Nginx instead of Apache, the solution is similar. We use the at underscore header syntax to add the very header and ensure that its value is X forwarded proto. Same deal, same result, Varnish will receive the response and will create the appropriate cache variations. A third option would be doing it in VCL itself without the need of modifying any web server configuration. You've seen the standard behavior for creating the hash earlier. It uses the request URL and the host header. What we're doing here is if the X forwarded proto header is set, we'll attach it to the hash, ensuring that there's scheme awareness in the lookup, meaning that Varnish will have an HTTPS version of the object and an HTTP version. And that eliminates that infinite redirect loop. And those were a couple of tips and tricks to avoid the two typical pitfalls you may experience when terminating TLS in conjunction with Varnish from a WordPress point of view. I hope it was helpful to you, but if you don't wanna be terminating TLS and want native TLS support in Varnish, have a look at our enterprise offering. It offers end-to-end -end TLS. And maybe sometime in the future, the Varnish Cache project will have that as well. But until then, it's either the enterprise version or using TLS termination with the tips and tricks I just presented. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again for another video.